Good evening. Welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader, sitting in with me, Mr. Tim Dennis. Good evening, Tim. Evening. So, we are going across the pond again, Tim, shaking one of our good friends out of bed at a very early hour. Because we're good friends like that. We are. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show, our good friend, historian and paranormal investigator, Mr. Richard Felix. Good evening, Richard. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. I guess I should say good morning to you. What time is it over there? <laughs> it's, it's, it's ten past four here. Oh, my. It's very early. <laughs> well, thanks for being a trooper and being on with us this, uh, this morning. It's I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Well, let's start off. You have something exciting coming up um, for Halloween, and we wanted to promote that and let people know about this. So go ahead and, and let everybody know what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm organizing um, what we believe to be the first um, all-Irish um, ghost fest um, in um, Kennedy Castle um, in County Offaly, right in the, in the Midlands. So one, one of the... One of the four castles that we actually that we've done on Most Haunted um, over the past two or three years, and um, I'm really very excited about it because it, it's as you probably know the Irish have um, a slightly different outlook on 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 ghosts, for want of a better word, than than, than certainly well I, either the the Americans or or, or or the British for that matter. Um, they have a I think they have a much more healthy respect. Oh, really? The whole thing. What what kind of respect, or what, what do you feel is the difference between our cultures and theirs? But well, very, I mean, to be honest with you, I was over there because um, I go over there quite a bit. I do a, um, quite a fascinating tour of the three castles: Kinnity, Charleville, and and Let Castle. I call it I call it Ireland's haunted triangle. Okay. Um, <laughs> which is quite fascinating. We do this tour of the three castles. And, and I was there about two years ago, uh, and they were driving me back up to, to Dublin, actually, to do a, ra a TV, to do TV3 uh, breakfast show, telling them what, I'd, what I was doing. And, and this Irish taxi driver said to me, well, what do you do then? And I, and I said, oh, I, I, I talk about ghosts, and I'm doing a talk in Kennedy Castle and a tour. And he says, how oh, the Lord laugh at you? And I said, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. He said, well, we're all Catholics, and, and we don't believe in ghosts. And I thought, excuse me? And, and, <laughs> um, basically, by the time I'd, I'd finished with him, he'd, he'd sort of opened up and told me that he'd, he'd actually seen, seen a ghost. But you know, they have a different... Uh, I, I suppose it's, it's the little people, fairies... Um, I don't know, g giants, um, banshees, it, it, it's a very different, there's no getting away from it. I, I mean, I know obviously an awful lot of you over there, you know, sort of um, have got Irish ancestry. Um, and I know for a fact that the, the, the banshee actually follows, um, can, can follow the, 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 the family. You know, from Ireland over, over to America. Oh, great. Um, That's my it, problem, Tim. I'm stuck with a banshee. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, there you go, you see. Um, but there is a definitely, uh, uh, there's a more healthy, I hope the health is probably the wrong word, m more of a respect, I think. Well, yeah, uh, definitely for the, uh, now are those what, what they consider elementals and the fairy folk? Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah, absolutely right. And they do have, and of course, again, uh, although obviously, you know, religion well, in my opinion, has, has always played a very big part in 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 the ghost business, um, which I have a, 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 a quite a, an interesting theory about, to say the least. Um, but it, but there's no doubt about it that uh, we're, we may be breaking into slightly new territory for people, uh, and in Ireland, and so I, I'm I'm you know I don't quite know how it's how it's going to be taken. I mean, obviously, they do ghost right. tours in Dublin and things like that, but that's a cosmopolitan city anyway now, you see. But when you get down into the to the wilds of Ireland, if you know what I mean, right into the centre of places like that, then, then yeah, they have, a, they have a different outlook on it and, and still have a, a slight, I suppose you could say, a slight fear of the whole thing. Well, what I think is, is interesting, too, about it is, as you look at the different realms, you know, here... You know, we've had, you know, we'll talk about ghosts, we'll talk about possession, demons, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, elementals, you know, some of the strange things like that. We'll talk yeah. about Bigfoot, Chupacabra, Loch Ness, they're all accepted. The minute somebody mentions trolls, 
fairies, gnomes, you know, yeah. all of a sudden we're, you know, leprechauns, we're, you know, we're all rolling our eyes. And you go over to Ireland and you start talking about the fairy folk and the elementals and the leprechauns, and they take it as real as we do our whole culture of, of weirdness. And, and that actually predates our culture, right? So oh, it's been around a lot longer. Just a bit. Just a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But again, there is... Did you hear how smarmy he got there, Tim? Just a bit. Yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> you Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> It's very different. I mean, you go to obviously other, go to um, places like Denmark and, and um, Sweden, Norway, um, it, it, Germany, France. They, 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 I don't know. They, they're more. They're actually more into their um, elementals um, and their, their, as you say, fairy folk, trolls, um, giants, goblins. Um, they're actually more into that sort of thing than than ghosts. Well, how can people get tickets to the event and, and participate with you? Oh, that's a very good point. Yes, it is. Right, they can either contact... <laughs> it's a three-day three, it's a three day event. Okay. We've got a huge a ghost fest uh, in Kennedy Castle. There's myself, um, there's Steve Parsons, who I, I think you know Steve. He, he's from Parascience. He, he, he used to be on Most Haunted as well. Right. And uh, then we've also got a young lady called Sarah Neal, who you may have heard of. She's very, very big in Ireland. Uh, she's a blind girl, and, and she is... Quite fascinating, no doubt about it. She's coming along as well. We've got a huge psychic fair, uh, paranormal investigations, a tour of, of the, a paranormal tour of the Sleeve Blue Mountains, which are absolutely fascinating. That, that's great. And then we've got a huge Ghost Hunters Ball as well, um, fancy dress, on, on the Saturday night. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's an extravaganza, basically. Um, and tickets... Um, are available, you can either contact us at darbyjail.com, which is G-A-O-L, darbyjail.com, or you can contact Kennedy Castle, which is kinetycastle.com. And how are you spelling Kennedy? Is it K... N's and two T's. K-I-N-I-T-T-Y. Sorry, that's not there. K-I-N-N-I-T-T. It is early, isn't it? Yes, it is. K-I-N-N-I-T-T-Y. I double T. That's kinetycastle dot com. Okay. And tickets tickets available. And you know we we would love to see some of our American brethren. We really would. It'd be great. Well, hopefully we can get some of our uh, our listeners. And you know we have a great global audience yeah. that listens to the show as well off of our podcast. So uh, again, if you have more in- information and you'd like more of that, I'll I'll um, have Richard email over to me links for that, and we'll post it up. Uh, in our in our about section, so that way I'll have either the lovely Delia or or the lovely Mike, my web people, put that up on the site for you, so that way people can find uh, links to buy those tickets. That's wonderful. Thanks very much. Yeah, not awesome. a problem. Now, Richard, I want to talk to you too because you've been uh, you know you've been on the show with us in the past, and we talked right. about you know we'll just do a brief rundown for people. You know, we're on a new station here. They a lot of the locals haven't heard the story. Richard Felix is of course a historian that was with um, Most On, and you were with him for four seasons. Is that right? Four, no, no. Um, seri- I did. I did one of series one, which was Derby Jail. I did series one, series two, series three, series four, series five, series six, series seven, series eight. I did 90, 99 programs and twenty three lives. Oh, okay, but maybe it was you've been off for the last four years. Then is that right? Uh, Where did I, four I did, come in? I did or, do four. I did four years. That's correct. Okay, uh, and, and I, I I left on at the end of series eight, and. Series 9 has now been done, and I think Series Ten's either been done or, or just about to be released. All right. Well, very so cool. It, it, so I had got quite a few under my belt, to say the least. No doubt. You know, 99 episodes, that's not too shabby. Now, you've, you, you did a lot of the research on the locations that you investigated, and, yeah. and uh, you've been off on your own. Now, you're you know a, a well-respected paranormal investigator yourself. You, um, you run a ghost uh, tour out there kind of deal. Or what, what is it? So with the Derby Jail, people can actually oh, yeah. come in and investigate. And That's right. Right. So that's out there. And then um, you also go out and, and continue to investigate, and you have a series of DVDs you've done. That's right. Right. And uh, we're going to have Richard out at the Queen Mary, which is really excited. We're going to have uh, Richard out with us at the Queen Mary in December, and Richard will be uh, hanging out and, and doing a talk. On ghosts, he'll have his DVDs, which at this point are only available in Europe. Correct? 
That's correct, yes. No, but are you going to... We'd like to get them out there, actually. Yeah, we'll get this stuff out and, and let people know about it and uh, promote you as much as you can. You also, you're in the works of doing a new magazine over there, right? Absolutely right. Yes, indeed. We're uh, we just... It's, I've got... Um, I've got rather... I've got two wonderful sons. Uh, one, Edward, he, he runs all the events that we do here, the ghost walks, the ghost tours, the huge ghost hunts that we do around castles. He's organizing the uh, the Kennedy Castle event. But I've then got a younger son who's only 21, who's, um, well, I don't know, what he doesn't do, you wouldn't believe. He, he's <laughs> created his own film production company. Um, he's um, publishes my books for me now. Uh, which are, you know, proper hardback uh, coffee table books. He creates the DVDs, gets them into uh, shops, you know, WH Smiths and, and Woolworths and all, all the sort of the big stores over here. Uh, and he's now decided that he's, he's going to create um, a magazine, um, a real credible magazine um, called Haunted, because he doesn't think the job's being done properly. So uh, Wow, very good. So he's contacted... Well, he's, he's contacted you for a start, Dave. <laughs> I know. Um, my my co-host just, oh, what the heck? And he didn't get back to him? Got first article from you. <laughs> yes, you got my first article on Are We Haunting Ourselves? Fascinating. Thank you. Um, really is. We've got Dr. Matthew Smith, um, who used to be the, who was the, the, um, the skeptic uh, on, on all the most haunted um, lives that we did at the beginning. Um, Steve Parsons from Parasites writing an article. Derek Acor is writing an article. Oh, great. Um, Ian Lawman, um, Archie Laurie from, from the Scottish uh, Psychical Research Society. Um, we, we're trying to get some, some big... We're going to try and make it a little bit like the, the um, OK magazine for, uh, for the paranormal. Very with celebrity cool. type things. Uh, we're having a every every quarter. We're having a, a celebrity's haunted home, um, a day in the life of one of the one of the paranormal celebrities. Um, all sorts of stuff, different, but but you know, we deal with some very credible people writing for us. And our friend um, Bill Murphy, who we just had on right before you came on, who yeah. does Tech Talk, he's in talks with you as well about doing some of the technical reviews on, on different right. products, Absolutely right? Absolutely right. I was talking to him the other night. He's a fascinating guy, he is, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. And then Adrian Lee. Now, you, this is kind of exciting too. Our, our buddy, who's our international correspondent, and is with us every Saturday night. You're going to get together with Adrian because I've loaned him our Ovilus, the the uh, ghost hunting equipment that we've used through uh, Bill Chapel at digitaldowsing.com. He's going to get together with you that and also show you the shack hack. He is indeed. I spoke to him the other day. Right. And he's going to come up. He's going to come up. Uh, and sit and see me, and we're going to have uh, we're, we're going to play. We're going to play with some of his equipment, very cool, uh, which is really good. And he has actually already. He's invited me to stay over when I come to Queen Mary. Um, right, and I wanted to talk about that. We're going to kind of drop some news here, possibly. I think uh, after the Queen Mary event, we might be booking an event here in Minnesota. Yes, where we're going to have Richard come out. It'll be a, a, a nice three or four tier deal. We might have. Uh, I'll come out and do a talk on, on ghost hunting and some of the evidence review. We'll have uh, Richard out, and he'll do a talk for us, and you get a chance to meet with Richard and get his autograph and, and signings. Um, I also talked to international, uh, world-renowned medium Robbie Thomas this weekend, and he is interested in joining us as well and just making a big day of it at this event and, and have some fun. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. yeah so. I'm really, really looking forward to that. And that'll be coming up in December, so we're going to hammer down those details this week as well. And uh, Tim, our lovely co-host and producer, is going to be there, and he's going to do a little EVP special for us and see if we wow. can't uh, can't get some EVPs. And then, who knows, we might even open up and do a little ghost hunt that night. Richard, what do you think? Yes, yes, please. Ghost hunt American be, style. Yeah, that would be absolutely fascinating. I'd love to do that. So it uh, looks like uh, uh, Christmas has come early for me this year. Yeah, well, it'll be about at least two weeks early for you, that's for sure. We're going to take our first break of this hour here, Richard, so stick with us. I'll and see you in a bit. Thank you, and everybody, thank you for listening. You're listening to The Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio. Stay with us. We're going to take your phone calls if you have questions for Richard Felix about his uh, episodes that he did with Most Haunted. If you have questions for Richard about the rich haunted history of Europe, feel free to give us a call. We'll be back with more Paranormal Talk. Right, And this is the best in Paranormal Talk radio, Darkness Radio, here every Saturday and Sunday night. 
We'll be sharing all the aspects of the paranormal ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, the Bermuda Triangle, and beyond. We're here with you sharing your experiences as well. If there's something that you want to talk about on the show, give us a call or email us at dave at darknessradio.com. I've got a great list of guests coming up over the next couple of months, Tim, from some of the most phenomenal um, uh, people, just references that we've been getting in. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, next week, and I apologize, I don't have his name sitting in front of me, but next week we're working on uh, uh, Shea Whitehurst, who's a friend of the show, mm-hmm. is helping us with uh, a gentleman who is um, who works very closely with NASA mm-hmm. and is also, one, I guess, one of the technical advisors on the Battlestar Galactica show. Yep. And uh, he is going to watch the episode of Paranormal State tomorrow. Oh. And we're going to have him come on next week, and he feels he can explain to me what it is I'm seeing in the skies over Gilliland's Ranch. Nice. He's going to make you all look crazy. Yeah, that's, that's okay. No, you know, we're <laughs> open for this, right? And then I told yeah, her, I she's know. like, Dave, are you sure you want to? I said, yeah, I want to do this. I want to. I want people to have the opportunity to uh, to tell me. I want to learn, too, man. I want to mm-hmm. know. I saw things. I saw things flashing, blinking, and I'd love to ask a, a NASA guy why. Why is this going on and what's going on in the skies above us? So again, we have on the line with us tonight, Mr. Richard Felix. And uh, if you have questions for Richard, you can give us a call at 651-989-5855. Join us in the live chat. Go to darknessradio.com. Click on the live chat link. You can join in. It's free. It's fun. And you can chat with other like-minded paranormal enthusiasts. If you have questions for Richard there and you're too shy to give us a call, you can just uh, PM over to Darkness Radio Tim your questions, private message him, and he will ask those questions on the air for you. We have Wendy online. We're going to take a question from her in a minute. Again, the phone number, give us a call. And I do want to make a quick mention, tickets are still available if you're interested for the Darkness Radio first annual Haunted Halloween Bash out at the uh, Palmer House in Sauk Center, Minnesota. You can go check out our website at darknessevents.com. And we've got some great information up there uh, regarding the uh, Halloween party. Also, the event that we have coming up at uh, Haunted Waverly Hills in May 2009. And a quick update, we did have the event booked with the Ghost Adventures guys for November to go to Rolling Hills. Good news for the Ghost Adventures guys. They're still in production, which is good good news for their show. Um, and they got bumped another couple of weeks, so they won't be able to do this event. We're going to postpone that. Not canceled. We're just postponing it until springtime so we can come back and we will be able to uh, investigate with the Ghost Adventures crew. And we've got some other great trips underneath our belt that will be coming up, including we're going to be working with you, Mr. Felix. We're going to come out to England and uh, Europe, and we're going to do a, a paranormal event out there with you. What do you think? Oh, fantastic. A- any idea when? Yeah, you know what? I want to set something up so we can look at doing something in summer of 2009 with you. So that gives oh, yeah. people a lot of time to start collecting. So I'm hoping between you and Adrian now working side by side out there, I can get you guys to hammer down some places. Uh, our good friend Christine Letterman is out there in Europe right now, and she's checking out hotels for us and, and the likes around these locations. And uh, we're going to try to put something together here so that by Christmas at the latest, we should have our European trip up for f- finally That's after fantastic. two years. Right. Yeah, I look forward to that. I can find you some, well, so from Adrian, of course, some fascinating um, haunted locations over here. Some really good stuff, some some fabulous castles that we've got. But, well, Richard, uh, we've got a, a caller online with us, right. and it's Wendy. And, Wendy, you have a question for Richard Felix? Yeah, Richard. I, hi. Hi. <laughs> nice talking to you. Um, thank thank you. for taking my call. And I just had a question. You kind of alluded to the fact earlier about your own um, belief system as far as why Catholics feel the yes. way they do yeah you know yeah. the irish catholic um which is my a little bit of my ancestry um and i just was curious to know what your opinion is about that as far as what you know you think their take is on it like yeah. i i is think that they religious have, or <laughs> sorry, i think they have a much um um slightly oh should i say old-fashioned is that probably the wrong word um healthier outlook or more of possibly a more more of a respect for ghosts um i mean i i have i have a huge thing you see um it's quite funny because um i i used to have until last year a, um a heritage center in in the center of derby which was right next right next to st peter's church and i used to get on very very well with with the vicar extremely well um, we shared, we used to do events together, but he, he said to me, Richard, you, you're very welcome to bring people into the church, uh, visitors tours, but please, no ghosts. Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, what, what, how, how can you, what, what do you mean, no ghosts? He says, 
Well, we, we don't do ghosts, you know, uh, um, and I said, but, but what about the Holy Ghost? <laughs> and he said, oh, well, well, well that's different. Um, <laughs> and in other words, he, he, he you know, no, no such thing or don't want to know. Uh, and I, I started talking to him, and one day I actually got him to admit that he personally had done, th this is Church of England, by the way, not Catholic, he personally had done four exorcisms. And yeah. Yet, and yet, he says to me, no ghosts. Don't, please. And I'm thinking, where are you coming from here? And uh, I've gone into it, actually, in, in great depth. And although um, the church, if you like, has, is the one that um, doesn't, I wouldn't say doesn't believe in ghosts, but certainly don't want people to have anything to do with ghosts, in my, my humble opinion, it's the church that have created some of the ghosts. Right. Uh, Richard, do you, think, do you think that from your side, what I've seen over here in the United States when we've talked to some of the clergy, I think that they want to avoid that as much as possible just because then they don't have to answer questions that they're uncomfortable answering. I, I when you get into theology and then asking, you know, the question I always ask about children's ghosts, I personally have a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that God would leave children here. Thank you very much. And, I couldn't agree more. I mean, uh, um, I mean it's, only, it's only recently... The, the, the Pope actually, um, I'm not sure which one, it's certainly not this one, I think it was John Paul, issued a papal bull. Are you sure it wasn't George Ringo? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he issued a papal bull stating that all baptized children don't go to purgatory anymore. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> I, I, wow. Well. No doubt. Well, thank you for calling in, Wendy. I yeah, hope we got your... I'm going to continue to listen to you guys. I know I have my own belief system, too, about all... It's the whole life after death thing, and, you know... Of course it is. Of course everybody it is. should be in heaven and peaceful. Absolutely. You well, know, that's the whole deal. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, other forces out there, external forces at work, and I just don't think that the Catholic Church wants to promote any dabbling in any um, astronomy or any of those kinds of, you know, things. It's, you know... Yeah, fear is right a big, the beginning a big of the controller. Bible, pretty much. Right. Correct. I couldn't agree more. All right. Well, thank you, Wendy. Thanks, guys. Nice talking yep. to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah, I, yeah, I've often wondered if that just makes more, um, you know, it, it, it's got to be hard for, for the church because they have to walk a thin line, too, especially Roman Catholic seems to be a lot tighter. They're yeah. not allowed to, you know, even though they may know and they may experience things, they kind of have to live like an ostrich with their head in the sand, and they can't really direct it and then the questions you know now it seems that the the um pope is loosening up and wasn't it on was it last night's show tim uh adrian mentioned that the pope has that now they're admitting that there are aliens and ufos and, yep. and they're or wow. maybe not admitting but they're they're not denying the fact anymore Ooh. so I mean, I, they're, they're acknowledging the possibility yes they're acknowledging the possibility that there might be alien life <laughs> So, you that's know, I mean, that's, something. yeah, that's, that's changing quite a bit. And, and, you know, maybe that's what's freeing people up to experience. You know, I think a lot of people are turning away from religion. We just, again, Adrian gave us a story not too long ago um, saying that in Europe, they're, they're losing like 50,000 uh, churchgoers a year, especially mm -hmm. women that are giving up and going into things like Wicca or, or paganism right. um, because the religious factor isn't working for them anymore and maybe that's because the closed-mindedness of the church not wanting to answer the tough questions has scared you've people it. away you've got it in one i mean over here you know in england i mean i i, I genuinely believe that that uh over in, in the states you, you still you still um are, are, are more for want of a better word more religious um than we are over here in england uh right. there's, there's, there's no getting away from it um People are, are leaving. Funnily enough, the fastest the fastest growing church in in England uh, or in Britain is, is the Spiritualist Church. Yes, that's what they were saying. We were getting quite a bit of that. We have to take another break. Tuesday, I know you're online and on hold with us. You have a question on the or an elementals theory you wanted to talk to Richard Felix about. We'll take your call as soon as we come back. And again, if you have questions or you'd like to talk to Richard Felix about his experiences on the TV show Most Haunted or talk to him about Haunted Europe, uh, please give us a call. We'll be back with more Darkness Radio. Welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town. I'm your host, Dave Schrader, and uh, this evening we're talking about uh, jolly old England and Europe. We're talking with uh, Richard Felix from Television's Most Haunted. He is a historian. Um, hey, Tim, I also wanted to make a quick mention. We forgot this in the first hour. Mm -hmm. We lost one of uh, America's classics over the weekend. We lost Mr. Paul Newman. Yeah. 
Yep. Very sad. 83 years old, and he lost his battle with cancer. So our, fa- mm-hmm. our, our thoughts and, and prayers are with the, the Newman family as they go through this trying time. And, uh, wow, what a loss to America, huh? I mean, that's just, uh, you know, it's, it's like... You know, Eastwood, one of those classics. You get one of the the big actors like that, and they just vanish. It's it's kind of sad. So mm-hmm. another another one of the classics are gone. So um, there's an interesting quote in the paper, and I'll just make this real quick. Uh, where he had said he thought towards the end of his life he would be making three movies a year. He went from making three movies a year to one movie every three years, and uh, had always thought he was going to make one great picture before he left us. And uh, unfortunately, it's been a few years since he's made one. Yeah, well, dude, it's hard to beat. I mean, this guy's had just a phenomenal career. The Sting, um, uh, what was it? Network, uh, not Network. Uh, Hudsucker Proxy. Hudsucker Proxy mm-hmm. was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the Color of Money. Mm-hmm. Um, just, I mean, what an amazing career this guy's had. You know, just, just uh, uh, my in the Sunday Cool Hand Dance Luke. Well, it's yeah. got to be one of my all-time favorite movies. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, just an amazing guy, and and he will be sorely missed. Um, we're going to go back in now and, and uh, take a call. Richard, we've got you back on the line with us. Yes, indeed. And it, uh, we have Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday Miles is calling us from uh, California, and she has a question for you. Hey, thank you very much, Phil. Um, how you doing? Um, I made a discovery actually noticing that there was a lot of activity in a lemon tree that's located between my house and my neighbor's house. Um, that my dog's staring at the tree for, for many hours. And then I started noticing that the rind on the lemon, just the rind, was being peeled off all in one evening, leaving no marks on the lemon flesh itself. There was no rind on the ground. There was no no uh, marks of an animal or a small insect um, eating on it. I contacted zoologists around the world, asking them if they could name any kind of animal, any kind of bug that would actually eat the rind. Um, these are large lemons um, that the rind was missing off the, these lemons. Um, again, the uh, fruit itself was, was not touched at all. Going back and doing some research on it, I discovered that back in the 70s, in, in some of these uh, uh, schools, these science teachers were doing experiments where they would take the acid from a lemon and see if it could generate enough energy to charge a battery or to light a light bulb. Noticing that these spirits were going around, these ghosts were going around these lemons, um, wow. actually on it, which we felt that they're the elemental um, spirits that were utilizing these lemon the, or the acidity from the lemon to generate their energy. Wow, you've you've left me speechless. That's that's some that's some. So so whatever was 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 taking it was actually taking the, the the rind only and leaving the flesh and leaving the flesh because after you expose um, the the flesh itself, it emits a carbon dioxide. Well, I've never heard of that. That's because I'm very 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 much into you know the the. I mean, I, I sort of preach, you know, all the time to people that, you know, that we are nothing but energy. Um, the ghosts, uh, elementals, call it, call it what you will, are, are nothing but energy. And of course, you know, some, and obviously the, to, to do something and to, to function, they, as we, you know, need more and more energy. But I've never, never heard of, um, of energy being given off by something like a citrus fruit before. Absolutely. Yeah, well, they didn't. We used to have those experiments in grade school over here, Tim, where we could make a clock run or a radio by plugging it into yeah. potatoes or lemons and, yep. and different citrus fruits. <laughs> yeah, they've I actually... I like it. Yeah, there's an energy to them. Uh, I'm trying to remember. They, I just my, was at my son's uh, school not too long ago, and they were doing all their science projects and science fairs, and they were able to do crazy stuff with, with the energy from the f- different fruit. Right. But, but see, with the lemons, though, it's because the acid in itself puts off a carbon dioxide once the rind is, is peeled off of it, yeah. and which also comes out to be looking like, it's almost like a little black poof of mist, you know, in seeing that these elementals going into the bush coming out looking darker, almost like a shallower person or shallow spirit. Weird. That they're absorbing the carbon dioxide and the energy from these lemons. So very interesting. Oh, I'm fascinated. So, so you think spirits, Tuesday, you think spirits eat carbon dioxide? Well, they absorb it because, you know, it's, it's, it's a fume. Well, that's interesting. The reason I mention that is, do you know that there's um, uh, the theory? Well, we know that plants put out oxygen during the daylight mm-hmm. and carbon dioxide at night. Mm-hmm. And a lot of hospitals used to take, um, I thought it was just that they, were, they used to remove plants and, and uh, flowers from your room at night. That's right. Uh, and, and I had heard, and it totally makes sense now, I had heard that, you know, part of it was because of the amount of carbon dioxide uh-huh. in the air, but they also, it had a, um, 
it had a, a kind of a superstitious backing to it as well. And I never knew what the story was, but I wonder if that's it. I wonder if because somebody's already ill and sick, if you're inviting in the dead or inviting in the spirits, you know, is it maybe drawing off that energy and they're afraid that, you know, that's going to take you with them? I don't know. Well, we know as living humans that we need to regenerate our, our energy itself. Being that in spirit, the fact is, is that they're finding ways of to how to regenerate their own energy also. It's not an endless supply they have. They have to find resources to generate it. And whether they're doing it off the electrical, you know, appliances, we've known that. We've seen them do that. But also going through the natural process of finding something that is in the natural sense. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks for the call Tuesday, yeah. and thanks for the insight. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. God, I'm, I'm, I'm really... I'm fascinated by that. I mean, is, is this anything to do with, with the fact that, that at a certain times of the year, certainly, I think, is it harvest time, um, people in the olden days used to go around um, orchards, um, fruit trees, um, firing guns into the trees uh, and various things to, to, to actually, as they said, ward off evil spirits from, oh. from the trees. Well, that would make more sense, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, because you see, in other words, you see, the thing is that we, we, for some reason, everyone seems to think that everything out there that we don't understand is evil. And so, you know, it, it, they're talking evil spirits. But are they evil spirits, or, or were they actually trying to ward off um, spirits of some sort that, that are actually <laughs> without taking the fruit? Well, very well could be. Wow. Yeah, Tim, you I had a question? Into that. Well, just that uh, the KTLK Outdoors crew here uh, that's on every Sunday afternoon will probably disagree with you about shooting into trees in the fall because you're going to hit a lot of deer hunters. Yeah, yeah. that would not be the yeah. best time to yeah. shoot. You probably want to avoid that during the fall. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, let's uh, let's talk, Richard, too, about, uh, about this. In your opinion, with all of the investigations that you got to do with Most Haunted and all the investigations you've got to do on your own DVD series, uh, first of all, is there a, a website people can go order your DVDs in the United States? Yes, indeed, there is. It's 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 info, I N F O info at felixfilms dot net. Uh, Felix Films is one word. Info at felixfilms dot net. And we've got. I mean, I've I've I must have. I think I've done oh, well over forty five um, DVDs of, of haunted locations around around the British Isles. Um, Northern Ireland, Scotland, um, and many, many uh, English counties uh, that I've now done. Um, and uh, they're all available. They're all available on, on uh, felixfilms.net. Um, we, we, do put them on, we do them on eBay as well. Um, and uh, they're, um, they're different. They're, <laughs> they're, 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 they're very interesting. You see, I, I'm into, as you probably know, I'm into the reality of, right. of ghosts. Um, I, I believe there are ghosts, but I believe at least eight out of ten can be explained in some way. Uh, and it comes over on, on, the, on the DVDs as well. And I'm now turning them into books. Great. So, um, you know, we've, we've got books. And indeed, I think there's, there's 11 different um, books out at the moment. I'm, I'm working on, on my uh, masterpiece at the moment, <laughs> which is going to be called What is a Ghost? Which Very has got good. Some revelations in it, to say the least. So people can just write to you at info at felixfilms dot net dot net, and N-E-T. and they can order the DVDs directly from you there. In, correct? They can. Yes. If they go to felixfilms dot net, is there information about the different movies and what's available? Yep. Yep. Okay. List of all the movies that are available, um, and the books as well, and in a little bit of information about them. Uh, yeah, all that. All right. Very cool. Well, we'll uh, we'll make sure that everybody gets that mention. We're going, to take it, we're going to take our last break of this hour. I do want to make a quick mention. For those of you that have purchased the Ovilus or the Paranormal Puck, um, we want your feedback. We want you to share with us on the show any of the evidence that you've collected. Please record it. Let us know about it. And we'd want to hear this. We're going to open up the show in a couple of weeks here, uh, maybe in two to three weeks when we get enough people with evidence that want to share this. Uh, and have you come on the air, share the evidence that you've collected, share your stories. I'd like uh, honest feedback on this, and, and Bill has a, a new product out there. It's very inexpensive. I think it's like 59 bucks. It's the Talker Kit, mm-hmm. and uh, he sent us two. We're going to be giving away in a few weeks on the show live, so uh, you can win. You know, we're, we're figuring out a cool little contest for that, so you can uh, be a part of that and win one of the Talkers. Uh, so keep checking on the, on the website and keep checking the show for updates on that, but please do contact us if you have any 
really cool evidence that you've been able to get from the Shack Hack, which, you know, he doesn't sell, but he was the one Bill Chappell created, you know, that and figured out how to hack the Radio Shack Hack. As a matter of fact, here's something cool, Tim. Bill Chappell created the Radio Shack Hack, hacked it, very first one, made the video, showed people how to do it online. For the Stanley event in November, we're going to be raising money for Shriners Children's Hospitals, mm -hmm. and he is bringing the very first Shack hack ever hacked, and he's going to donate it for auction. Really? Yeah, so that's pretty cool, and, and he'll Very include cool. the video of him hacking it so people can see how it was done, and this is the actual piece. He's got a nice little plate for it and everything that states that this is the first official Shack hack, so it'll be kind of cool. Huh. But, uh, yeah, if you get any other cool uh, evidence using the paranormal puck, the uh, the Avalis or the talking uh, kit, please Give us a call, email us, let us know about it, and check out uh, digitaldowsing.com. We'll be back with more Richard Felix and more of your calls. Talk to Richard Felix. Good evening. Welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader. I want to remind you, tomorrow night, Paranormal State on A&E, 9 o'clock Central Time, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Check your local listings for the official times in your area. And uh, we're going to be... I was invited to come out and take the kids out of their normal environment. We're not ghost hunting. We're out actually... At the Gilliland Ranch, Isetti Ranch in uh, Trout Lake, Washington. If you'd like more information on the ranch, go to ECETI.org. ECETI.org. Check this out. It's an amazing place. And we got some really cool evidence. Next week, we're going to have uh, a special guest on the air who's going to come on and share with us the um, his thought. He's, he's He works with NASA. He's one of the technical advisors to Battlestar Galactica TV series. Our good friend Shay Whitehurst is helping to set up the interview. And uh, he's going to come on next Saturday and try to talk to me a little bit about what we're seeing in the sky. What are all these crazy UFOs that are being seen all over the world? Hopefully we'll get a little bit of insight. Right now, talking about crazy, let's go back to the lines with Mr. Richard Felix from TV's Most Haunted. Hi. <laughs> Richard, when you're uh, doing your investigating, do you find, um, when you've been over in the States, and ha have you had a chance to really investigate here in the United States much with local teams? No, I haven't. I, I, all I did was, we, well, the last time I was at the Queen Mary, um, two, funnily enough, two years ago, uh, in uh, in December, I was with the San Diego uh, Paranormal uh, group. They, they did a, a ghost fest over there, and we actually did a, uh, an evening, um, and I actually went back onto, uh, into cabin 340 and, and spent the night <laughs> again alone well well nearly alone i actually had a i actually had a teddy bear with me because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did we did do a thing over here called um, it's a save the children fund every year uh, and um they have this pudsy teddy bear with a bandage across and they, they gave me one to bring over because i tried to raise some money uh, for the church to save the children fund and i me and the bear spent the night uh, in cabin 340 um I'll be honest, not a lot happened, but, but, but the toilet did flush itself during the night, which, which was quite interesting because... Well, it's nice to know that the ghosts will give you a courtesy flush, Richard. Well, exactly, but the thing <laughs> is, the toilet, the toilet doesn't work in cabin 340. Uh, you know, if you, oh, really? if you need the toilet, you have to go back to your own cabin. Oh, yeah. And, and they got it on film. They got it, got it on film. They got it on, they recorded, recorded it. It definitely, definitely came from the cabin. Yeah, I think uh, you were actually investigating with the Pasadena Paranormal Group, uh, Sid, Sid's group. That was, sorry, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. it wasn't San Diego. It was Pasadena. Yeah, Pasadena. Our friend Sid is in the chat room and said, "Hey, that was our group that worked with Richard." That's absolutely right. Very yes, cool. It was. They were great. They really were. So that is actually the only up to now. That is the only um, opportunity that I've had uh, to work with with American paranormal groups, and, and I desperately would like to do some more because uh, you you have. Um, I mean, really, you're you're miles ahead of us, you know. Uh, over here, wow. um, you really are. You know, you're. You're. I mean, even down to paranormal research, um, you, you are streets ahead of us. And 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 I genuinely believe that I can I can learn um, quite a lot more from 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 you people over there. I really can. So Tim, I need to get myself over and and get some genuine research done. Tim, you had a question from Mike G in the chat room. Mm -hmm. You're so flattering, Richard, with the whole. Yeah. Aw. Aw. Uh, Mike G wants to know, Richard, uh, if you can talk a little bit about when you were on Most Haunted and you were stuck in a cabin on the Queen Mary overnight and you were continuously awakened by voices and bangs. Yeah. Uh, what did you, uh, what wasn't shown on the show that uh, might be a little intriguing for our audience about that whole experience? That was, for me, quite, quite, I mean, you see, 
What wasn't shown was that it was really Yvette and Carl in the other room having a massive fight. Oh, Lord, that's it. <laughs> and Richard and Richard they, they, didn't know. They were they were not. They were a long way, <laughs> awful long way from uh, uh, from cabin three four zero. Which, of course, you see, the thing is that. that there is nobody that stays next door in cabin 340 because um, one side is an office and the other side is a, is a storeroom. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I, I was... I mean, you, you, you see, I'm frightened of ghosts. That's, that, that's the problem I have. So for me to spend the night in, in somewhere haunted is, is, is not easy. And I had a very, 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 very large tumbler of whiskey uh, before I... <laughs> Before I went in there, I was genuinely. You surprised. gotta love the honesty of the British. Well, it's so true. You know, I am. I am terrified of going. And I, maybe you're not even British, are you? I'm saying British, aren't you? Or, or are you British? Or, or, did you grow up in England? Oh, very, very okay, much. Very British. Okay, well, I didn't want to offend, and you'd be like, <laughs> "Screw you, I'm Irish," you know. And... No, but funnily enough, my, 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 my two of my great grandparents were, were Irish, so there's there's a bit of the Blarney in me. There's no getting away. I from can it. sense that, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> But I love how he admitted. It. Could you see Jason and Grant? Yeah, when we saw that thing dart up the stairs. Of course, we had had a couple of tequila shots prior to that. <laughs> they were doing body shots off each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> so you'd you'd had it. You'd been sipping at the spirits a little bit that night when you were experiencing those things. Who me? Yeah. No, well, yeah, I'd, I'd had a very large tumbler of whiskey, but the, the thing is, you see, this is the, the, the great bit about it. Two things. Number one, I, me being a skeptic, right, Mr. Skeptic, I'd actually got the door locked from the inside. I know that nobody, I know that nobody could have come in. That's the first thing. And secondly, I didn't, I actually didn't witness any of the voice, the voice or, or the footsteps, because I was gone. <laughs> I was absolutely fast asleep. And it was only when we got back to England and we, we were listening to Kieran O'Keefe's, Kieran O'Keefe's computer, because basically we'd recorded it. It was running all night. The camera was running through his computer. And it was only when Kieran rang me and said, Richard, you just want to listen. You just want to hear what I've, what I've got on, on my computer. And we got this this voice of, of, of a child. Just one, just one voice. And, but first of all, there was footsteps around my bed. Now, the thing is that the floor of, the, of, of cabin 340 isn't carpeted. And, and these footsteps were, were genuinely on, on concrete, on a hard floor. Uh, wow. and the whole of the Queen Mary is, as you probably know, lavishly carpeted. Uh, so it was nobody walking by, nothing like that, nobody walking in another room. It was in the room. It was going around my bed. And then we heard this little voice that just once said, Mommy. But, but I was asleep. I didn't hear it. Maybe, uh, you, were, only, maybe uh, you were dreaming, Richard. No. Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about this? You know, Richard, at, at all of our events, we always auction off a private ghost hunt. Maybe what we do at the Queen Mary event you're going to be at is we auction off a private ghost hunt with Richard Felix, a tumbler of whiskey, and yeah. you in that room. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Listen, Richard, he's like, yeah, let's do it until you get, like, a guy that's 400 pounds and has his I Love Richard Felix t-shirt and wants to spend the night with you in whiskey in a room, Richard. Oh, that, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an old Karnak joke that Johnny Carson used to do. Can you organize a, um, a, a nice blonde? Female, um, no, oh. <laughs> no, let's get back to go. <laughs> yes, well, we've we got about 30 seconds left on the show here, Richard. Um, again, for people that want to attend your uh, event in Europe for Halloween this year, tell them how they can get information and come out and spend time with it. Get in touch with us at, at DarbyJail.com, which is G-A-O-L, G-A-O-L, uh, or they can get in touch with KinnityCastle.com, which is the, the, the haunted Irish castle in the Midlands of Ireland where we're doing this fascinating and that's uh, Irish Ghost Fest. K-I-N-N-I-T-T-Y Castle.com. K-I-N-N-I-T-T-Y.com. Uh, or castle.com. That's the one. And we'll throw up a couple of links. I'll have Mike maybe get on that. Mike, if you're in the chat room, thanks for that last question. If you can get up links for us, uh, for Richard Felix, I'd appreciate that so people know how to do that. Richard, as always, thank you, sir. You are a gentleman and a scholar. We'll look forward to seeing you in Queen Mary in December and bringing you out to, to sunny Minnesota in the middle of December. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going back to bed now. All right. Good night, sir. Have a good one. Good night. And thank you all for tuning in. Stay tuned. We're going to be back after the top of the hour with our good friend Patrick Burns from Television's Haunting Evidence, which returns to TV October 4th on True TV. Check local listings for times. Right now, though, it's almost 11 o'clock here in Minnesota. You're listening to the best in paranormal talk radio.